Hello, and welcome to Ask Mama Amy, a podcast promoting practical advice and resources for strong mothers. I'm your host, Amy Shao, single mom and estate planning attorney and founder of Shao Law. Hi, everybody. I'm so happy to have Dr. Mina here with us. Um, and Dr. Mina is a family chiropractor, and she specializes in helping families and children for the overall health of the family. I am so excited to um, have her here. Hi, Dr. Mina. Welcome. Hello. Good to see you, Amy. Nice to see you. And so for everybody, I actually met Dr. Mina at a, at a kids event. So we, um, you know, she had a booth and I sat down and she said, I'm going to measure your stress level. And so I just stuck out my finger and then she did this amazing test for me and was able to immediately see my pulses and, you know, everything that's going on with me, my body. And then she did a little one minute session with me and I was so impressed with her. And I was like, I got to interview her. <laughs> <laughs> and so, Dr. Amina, can you just kind of share with us what that device is and how that can be helpful to people when they come to you? Yes, for sure. Yeah, and, and just to let you know a little bit more about me, I am a practicing chiropractor for now, I was thinking 20 years this March. Wow. And yes, I know. It's, it blows my mind to think how the time flew. Um, and also, I practice clinical nutrition for now almost 19 years. Um, and so with the chiropractic uh, portion, I got this new technology just this fall, which Amy was just talking about, where it measures three different parts of your nervous system. It gives you an inside view without taking x-rays or being invasive, but gives you insight on how your nervous system is functioning. And the reason why we look at the nervous system is because the nervous system is basically the master controller of your whole body. And we as chiropractors look at optimizing that nervous system by in reducing the interference that's happening in the body to that nervous system. And so with this cool technology called the Insight technology, what Amy was talking about, we were able to measure what's called heart rate variability. And that's one thing that has been actually um, very popular lately with athletes and with um, people in NASA, where they measure their heart rate variability because it measures how your body is able to adapt to stress. So, for example, if your heart rate variability is really low, then the chances are when you come across a stressful or traumatic event, your body won't be able to handle it very easily. Versus if you had a very good heart rate variability or a high score on your heart rate vari variability, you know, some stress that may come uh, across, you may come across in life, your body would be able to adapt and respond really well without causing any major damage or um, detriment to your body. So it's a really, really cool measurement of what's going on and how your body's able to adapt to stress. And then the other components of this technology, which I didn't um, do at the event for time's sake, is also a um, electromyogram where it measures the, the electrical or the muscle activity alongside your spine. So it shows how your brain is communicating to those muscles alongside your spine. And then the, the third component is a thermography, which measures the temperature of what's um, going on alongside your spine, which is indicative of what we call the autonomic nervous system, which is the part of the nervous system, like, for example, that uh, regulates heartbeat or controls your breathing, things that, you know, you as a person aren't you know, consciously aware of your body is just able to do it on, on its own, but it measures how those different organs are functioning in the body. So it's, it's just an amazing technology and they keep evolving it. And so I feel like I got the latest and greatest technology to basically just see, get an inside view of what's going on in your nervous system and your body. That is just so awesome. And you're able to, and all of that is done non-invasively right so yeah. and and you're able to take that information and then create a plan that's suitable for the patient um, based on their needs and where they're at right 
Exactly. You got it right on, Amy. Yes. So that's why I'm able to create care plans for people, whether it be, you know, uh, an adult or even a little kid. We are able to do even infants, which is so incredible, you know, because we are able to, at an early age, just get a picture of what's going on inside their nervous system. Mm -hmm. And I remember that conversation we had. And it's one thing that just stuck out to me was since like, for example, myself, I have a five-year-old and a lot of my uh, people I know have little ones. And you're saying that it's really beneficial for the little ones to go in and see you because their body is not (laughs) too affected yet. (laughs) And so you can see a lot of um, benefits when they uh, adjust certain things. Can you elaborate a little bit more on that? Yes, exactly. Wow, you have an amazing memory, Amy. (laughs) Um, Yes, so, you know, with kids versus adults, uh, no, uh, uh, I don't want to offend any adults here, but kids, they're able to adapt so much quicker than adults, just like what Amy was saying, because they don't have all those layers of issues that we adults over time develop. So working with kids has been such a pure joy and um, it gives me so much fulfillment because we're able to see results so much quicker than adults, you know, so that's why, um, you know, my belief is to be able to get your kid in as soon as possible, just to see what's going on and see if um, there's anything that we can help them out with. And with that, we're able to, you know, be able to do some, uh, a treatment plan that's very, very quick and efficient and gets really, really good results. And can you give us some examples? I remember you mentioning maybe some kids had certain uh, uh, problems or, um, yeah, can you give us some examples? Yes, sure. So I work with kids that have, whether it be the baby infants that have colic, Mm -hmm. you know, problems, you know, with their digestive system and spitting up. And we're able to help them, you know, manage their colic and calm their nervous system and digestive system down. So they're able to digest and rest a lot better. And I've had kids with like ear infections who were had chronic ear infections, you know, first had Uh, ear infection in one ear and then would get it in the other ear and then within a few months get double ear infections. So um, we're able to help them naturally to be able to, um, first of all, uh, control their nervous system where the ear tubes are located and we stimulate the muscle that is connected to the ear tubes to help your the ear tubes drain a lot easier so mm-hmm. that's able to help kids yeah especially with ear infections and that's something that you know uh is true to my heart because mm-hmm. i suffered with ear infections as a kid i remember waking up in the middle of the night with uh crying because my ears hurt so much and my parents were trying to put some you know medication on my ears to make me feel better uh, but the ears like a, a very natural and quick approach to be able to help that And then there's also kids with anxiety. Um, I'm dealing with a little girl who has a lot of anxiety and just gets meltdowns very, you know, from zero to 10, goes from zero to 10 in like Mm -hmm. a few seconds. And so we're able to help kids regulate that nervous system, which in turn helps them deal with their anxiety, helps them deal with their emotions in a much calmer level. So, so yeah, so those are a few examples of some of the kiddos I work with. Um, And again, yes, they respond so, so quickly. And um, yeah, and it's just pure joy to be able to to work with these these kiddos. And again, with the families too. So my ideal situation is to be able to work with the entire family so that the entire family is, uh, you know, as healthy as possible. Like last night, I had a family of three that came in and they're like, wow, you know, we haven't even gotten sick. And (sighs) all these people around, yeah, they're all, they're, they're, other family members around them are getting, you know, whether it be the flu or, you know, it might even be, you know, with COVID now, um, Mm -hmm. rampant, but they're able to stay really healthy and vital during this time. So Mm -hmm. I just love being able to empower people and families to be able to stay at their healthiest. Yeah. And so you mentioned um, you're also helping them with nutrition, right? So when they go in, in addition to the chiral practice portion, do you also give them advice on their diet? 
<laughs> yes. Yeah, so for those that are willing to listen, yes, I <laughs> I do love uh, the, the nutrition component as well. I'm a, a clinical nutritionist. And again, like what I said earlier, I've been for 19 years and that's another one of my passions. And yeah, and so I'm able to help people, you know, get the nutrition that they need. And I feel like the my unique ability is to be able to give um, the clients, whatever their body, whatever's right for their body. So it's not like a, a blanket approach where I say, you know, everyone needs, you know, this and that, but I yeah. find what's specific for their body. That's so amazing. And I am so curious about you personally. <laughs> like, so what prompted you to become a chiropractor and, and tell us about your life as a mom and how does this intertwine and how, what motivated you to be helping families and to be helping kids? Great question, Amy. Yes. Uh, well, I I went to uh, my did my bachelor's at UCLA, and uh, while I was at UCLA, I worked in the hospital um, just as a part time job, you know, trying to get some money as a student. Mm -hmm. And um, my parents kept encouraging me, "Why don't you go to medical school?" You know, and you know that that you know I ran that through my mind but I just felt like in that environment I wouldn't be you know happy um pursuing a career there it was just you know it was just a different type of environment very you know very fast-paced very you know this and that and I just it just I just didn't vibe with it and then my friend dragged me over to another his chiropractor and he had a little presentation and when I went to that presentation, I was like, wow, you know, here's a form of healthcare, but from a natural perspective. Mm -hmm. So I was very, very intrigued. And I actually sought some care from the chiropractor and felt amazing. Mm -hmm. And then what I ended up doing um, was working for a chiropractor. Yeah. And when, once I did that, then I'm like, the light bulb came on and I'm like, well, this is what I want to do when I grow up. <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> and so, yeah, so then I, I applied and, and then went to chiropractic graduate program. And so, yeah, and I've loved it ever since. But yeah. uh, the question that you asked about gearing towards families, Amy, is um, actually it was when I started my own family. And I have a daughter now that's 12 going on 15 or 16 but um when i started thinking about raising her i actually um had the mindset of raising her as healthy as possible mm -hmm. to her fullest potential mm -hmm. and this was even while i was pregnant with her because i got the knowledge that you know in, in um, the american culture we don't really um put a lot of attention, or at least back then, on taking care of yourself even before you get pregnant. Mm. And so I read this book and um, it talked about preconception pregnancy. Mm -hmm. And it talked about taking care of yourself before you get pregnant. Mm -hmm. And even not only the mother, but also the father. Because, you know, yes. the father, yes. you know, the, father <laughs> the, father, the poor guy who's being yeah. neglected the whole time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, no, but he brings in his, you know, chromosomes and genetics in there. So we want to optimize both the mother and the father to be able to create, you know, the healthiest baby that can be. So me and my husband, we um, we did like a kind of like a detox and preparation uh, oh. before we started trying for pregnancy. And then even throughout my pregnancy, you know, I was very mindful of what I was doing, whether it be, you know, the diet and also the lifestyle. So, you know, and now after she was born, you know, we started her immediately with chiropractic and wow. gave her, you know, the right foods. You know, I, I breastfed for three years. Um, yeah, knowing, you know, that that would optimize the nutrition that she was getting in her body. Plus, she didn't want to wean off me. I thought, oh my gosh, she should she want to stop, but no, she kept going on me. <laughs> <laughs> and for some reason, I just kept producing. So um, <laughs> that worked out. <laughs> That's awesome. How I'm curious, how long was the detox pre-pregnancy? 
Yeah. So that was um, six months, they say, is the ideal. Oh, okay. Yeah, even up to a year. But we did. But you were trying in that time or no, you, you detox for six months and then you started trying. Yes, yeah. exactly. Exactly. Yes. And so, wow. yes. And, you know, and, you know, who knows, it may be coincidence, but we have just a very healthy daughter. She, uh, the only time she's had to, you know, see a doctor was for when she, she actually broke her arm first day of kindergarten on the playing ground. Mm -hmm. But um, other than that, she's been amazingly healthy and vibrant, very uh, kind child, very smart. She says she's smarter than me, you know, (laughs) ever since she was like four years old. (laughs) Oh yeah. (laughs) She's yeah, it's been a pure joy to to raise her. And so I come with a mindset of trying to help families do the same for their kids. You know, I want um, what we were blessed to have with our daughter for the other kids in the community. And especially um, once she started going to school and seeing the kids in her classroom and just seeing how, you know, a lot of kids were struggling, you know, whether to focus or, you know, with their immune systems, I'm like, Oh my gosh, you know, I would love to help you out in any way. And I believe I have some strategies to help do that naturally. So, you know, yeah, so that is my passion and purpose is to be able to help the community and help the families to be as healthy as possible. Because I believe, you know, health is, you know, probably one of the most important things, especially at this day and age, right? For sure. And that sounds to me like the physical health also impact the mental health, right? Because she's happy, she's, she's healthy, and it's easier to be happy when you're healthy. Uh, No, uh, definitely. Yeah, it was interesting you mentioned that, Amy, because uh, my daughter is a competitive gymnast, and she has a teammate who, um, who, yeah, like during this whole um, lockdown in the having to seek therapy, you know, at 13 or 12, 12 to 13 years old and just seeing how she is, you know, it, it was, it was heartbreaking, very heartbreaking. But then again, you know, and then you look at her diet and all she eats are candy and, um, and like those boba drinks or the Slurpees. And so I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, I want to help you out so much. I keep reaching out to her mom saying, you know, I'd love to help, you know, your daughter out um, in any way. And, you know, and and she's, you know, seeking counseling, which is great, but, you know, it just shows um, how, you know, things are affecting the child's mental health, right? If they're not healthy in their body, then it transfers over into their mind and yeah, their emotion. Wow. So when you develop these care plans for kids, do you come up with uh, like chiropractic, of course, and then also the recommended diet, (laughs) recommended nutrition menu or things like that? Is that how you approach it? Yes. So if they're open to it, then that's, um, I, I give a recommendation for chiropractic and nutrition, but I found out over the years of practice, um, there's a quote that says, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. So it's only if they're ready to accept, you know, these recommendations that I'm, you know, I'm here for them, ready to teach them whatever they're ready for. Does that make sense? Yes, that makes absolute <laughs> sense. You can force yes. them. So right. you have yes. an open heart. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yes. I mean, but that is absolutely my ideal client is to be able to tackle, you know, both parts, whether, be, you know, with the nervous system and then nutritionally and biochemically. Uh-huh. Like, for example, I have this longtime client who is now going to be 85 this year. And she um, is someone who I hold uh, true to my heart. She had autoimmune issues Mm -hmm. and also um, pain in her low back, sciatic pain, where she had to take steroids. And with, you know, the chiropractic and also she was open to the nutrition, Uh pain-free, medication-free, and thriving at 85 years old. It's amazing. She walks two hours a day. Yeah, she is. Yes. Yeah. I tell her, you know, you are my, you know, my prototype type of client. And I, I strive to be someone like you, you know. When oh, I'm- yeah, that, that is just absolutely fantastic. Um, so 
if you were to define, because you as a mom yourself and running a practice, I bet there's so much on your plate. Um, you got to have a lot of strength for that. And so what would your definition for a strong mom be? What is the definition of strength for you? Wow. Yeah, that's a great question. Ooh, well, uh, a strong mom, I believe, is someone that takes care of themselves, mm. becomes the strongest version of themselves so that they can better take care of, you know, their families, right? Mm -hmm. I believe, you know, because I'm here, um, you know, going through a shift in my hormones, you know, becoming menopausal, you know, I'm, I'm older, I'm an older mom. Mm -hmm. uh, but if I didn't take good care of myself, I couldn't imagine like being able to take care of my daughter in the way that I do today. You know, I'm able to be there for her, be present, have the energy to be able to do the crazy things that, you know, her as a competitive gymnast likes to do, you know, run around and jump around and, you know, and be very active. So I believe, you know, because, you know, I've taken good care of myself. Um, and just as a side note, I feel like I'm the, the strongest that I've been, you know, throughout yeah. my life. Just because of all the things that I've done, you know, whether it be the chiropractic, you know, the nutrition, also the lifestyle, I love to be able to exercise or, you know, yoga and also weight training. So um, I feel like now in my 50s, I'm like the strongest that I've been in my life. Wow. Yes. That's and a so, lot. To say yeah. That. <laughs> yes. So it's funny talking to friends, you know, and they're like, oh my gosh, I'm getting old and, you know, and, you know, my joints hurt and I can't do this or that. And I'm like, no, you're not old. old age is just a number, you know. <laughs> I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm the youngest I've been in my life, you know, as far as how I feel. So, you know, so yeah, so being a strong mom is first, I believe, being able to take care of yourself, be the strongest, most empowered woman you can be. And then that transfers over into, you know, your children mm -hmm. and everyone else around you. Yeah, I love that definition. And you're such a wonderful resource for the community. And so how can people get in touch with you? Yeah, so they can get in touch me, with me either via my website, which is LV and then chiropractic.net. Or um, we have an L as in Larry V as in Victor, a chiropractic and wellness Facebook page. Mm -hmm. And we also have an Instagram, which I'm, I'm working on, but um, it is there. It's the handle is LV Cairo SD. Mm -hmm. We'll so, post that in the show note as well. Yeah, just so people can click on it. Okay, great. Now, yeah. do people during COVID times, do people, do you have virtual meetings for the initial consultation or what, how is the setup? Right. Yeah. So it, it depends on the, the person, but we have set up some virtual meetings mm -hmm. um, for the initial, the initial visit. And I also have like my nutrition, a lot of my nutrition clients are virtual that are all over the country. So, um, so we're able to do that. And, um, and then if there's some that want to come in, we're able to do that. And we have, you know, safety protocols in place. So it's whatever the comfort level of the person or, you know, whether they're, they're close by or, you know, if they're far, we have the, the convenience of technology. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Mina, for being with us today. Um, we'll talk to you next time. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining us today on Ask Mama Amy. Head over to AskMamaAmy.com for all the show notes and links you heard in today's episode. You'll also get my free legal tool for you to name legal guardians for your children so that you can leave them with abundant resources to support them and a total peace of mind. If you liked today's episode, please subscribe and leave a review to tell us why. See you next time, mamas.